morning. Uh, voice is still super shit. I, whatever. I have a drive today. I'm headed to Vicksburg, Mississippi. Got a meeting up there. And for those who ask, whenever I leave and I have meetings, right, all of that is nine to five job related. I keep getting questions about that. So I'll give you a quick rundown on what I do. My nine to five job is I am an outside sales rep or business development manager for the Southeast region for a uh, specialty contractor in the petrochemical industry. So in the refineries and oil and gas market, we work on certain units and fix them. So whenever they're gonna have shutdowns or a uh, turnaround, we get called in to uh, come in and do that job. I sell that service, so I go out and I meet customers and I meet engineers and operators and planners and see how they can use us for future work. So that's what I do for my nine to five. That's what my life is, that's why I'm on the road, that's why I do those things other than when I'm competing. So that's my job. You guys asked and now you got some answers. That's what I do. It's not that exciting, but it's a good gig. It, uh, it's, it's been good, it pays my bills. I like it, I have free time. I get to spend a lot of time in the truck listening to podcasts. I'm gonna keep drinking coffee. So apparently in my world of being an or unorganized prick, I lost some more footage. It's nothing good, I was just on the road. Um, I think I talked about fucking food. You didn't miss anything. I did get home from Vicksburg that day. Roughly I spent six and a half hours driving and got home and did a bench workout. This is your workout. And uh, if the rest of the footage stinks, I'll probably talk to you guys some more. Exactly. <laughs> Me. 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 Huh. We can do it how you want to do it, nigga. The killer on the road. All right, so back home from driving. You got a bench today, right? Pretty exciting stuff. Upper body and upper body accessories in the game. All right, get into it. Straight lace dum dums, anti social. Don't like no one if they not locals. Not too vocal. They don't say much. Root and stand off. They don't play much. I will say this. If you play this, I can shake your brain loose or all that gay shit. I'm a real nigg on that back in the day shit. Smoke a shirt, stick up out the regal and spray shit. Me and my amigos, the ones I call friends, are a pack of wild niggas. All real men, not all of them will shoot, but all of them will thump and we'll turn this party out. You ain't looking at no bombs. That LA gang bang culture was innocent. Started in the 70s and it ain't finished. Big homie die, little homie replenish. Place in society, goddamn menace. I'm not bragging, I'm confessing that why we're in what I am repping. Southern California stand up, fuck up. We have one little buddy trying to fuck up. I'm not bragging, I'm confessing that why we're in what I am repping. Southern California stand up, fuck up. We have one little buddy trying to fuck up. Good workout. Hit bench, worked up to 170 for a triple, I'm pretty stoked on that. Hammered some slingshot, and then went through some accessories. Did some, uh, did some incline with the bar, did some flies, did some dips, did some tricep extensions, and two styles of curls. I really didn't film all of it because it's fucking accessories and they just aren't important. It's a good workout though. I'm starting to kind of get a feel for it. I kind of feel the pump that people are talking about. 
like uh, the arm hurts and doesn't want to move so good. Like uh, I know the weight's light, but uh, I just can't make the arm uh, lifted anymore. So that's good. That's that, that's that uh, failure. I can win that fucking coming in hypertrophy. Can't wait to get that thing. Probably like level 60. I'll fight Sonic and Tails. What's the name of the bad guy from Sonic? Not Wario or Bowser. Sega was second rate shit anyway. Let's just be honest. They did get Mortal Kombat with blood first. Fucking good stuff. Still no update on surgery. So we're talking about setbacks, limitations. Those are things I'm currently dealing with, right? And everyone is gonna deal with them. And so the longer you train across this axis, it's, it's almost gonna be identical, right, to the amount of shit that's gonna get in your way for making progress. When you first start training and you're way over here, like progress is easy because you've never done it before. This is all new stimulus. Your muscles wanna grow, you're eating, and, and you're in the gym a lot. But as you continue, the same amount of work doesn't get the same amount of progress. You have to put in more work, more time to see similar results. And so what used to be 40 and 50 pound gains over a cycle, you're now gonna see five. And that type of steady stuff is gonna be progress because you're starting to reach that plateau or that potential of what your body's actually capable of. And make no mistake, there's a point. I mean, no one continues to get stronger forever, they, they die. No one's as strong the day before they die as they were at some other point, right? So you can keep making progress and that's why people who've lifted for a really long time start talking about stuff like beltless, start talking about sleeves versus wraps, different styles of squats or different style of bench or my best triple, my best five, my best lift at this body weight. All those things start playing a part and you start paying attention to those because progress is still progress, right? I start looking at speed and how fast I can move the bar and measure how explosive I am, whether that's gonna be using a Tendo or it's gonna be using some other device that measures velocity. For me, as a power athlete, as a strength athlete, then my performance is really based on max power, how fast I can accelerate a sub-maximal weight. That's my bread and butter. Now, max strength is gonna play a part in that because Stronger is always better. It's always gonna be better. Stronger is gonna make lighter weight still move faster, but you still have to train dynamically. And so you've gotta to train to accelerate that bar because at some point you see guys that, whether they're benching 135, 225, or 315, the bar all moves the same way. It's not like 135 moves three times faster than 315. Now, if 315 is close to your max, yes. But if 315 is, say, 65%, you're just not going to be able to move the bar any faster sometimes than, than you can move, right? It's as fast as your arm can actually extend. So training yourself to move faster, that's where some bands really start playing an important part, or chains, this accommodating resistance. For me, what I really like to do is use something that actually measures that speed and gives me a max output. And that way I have something to base it on. So later in the season, I don't have to worry about frying my CNS while I'm already beat up from travel, I'm already beat up from competing every weekend, I don't need to get in the gym on Monday and try to put 90% on my back. I can stay focused and stay around 65 to 75% and worry about how fast I move the bar. That's explosive strength, that is athletic stuff. That's gonna be that power and speed that people want for athletes. And believe me, I've met plenty of athletes out there that look like Tarzan and compete like Jane. That fucking sucks. I would way rather be that sleeper, right? That guy that no one's expecting, but he just has it. He's got that strength and he's got that pop. He's got that ability to turn it on and he has that other gear. That's where that next level really comes from. Those are your freaks. So starting to train and think like that with jumping and these max effort as far as a speed movement. You can't jump slow. Now you don't need to jump to some fucking stupid high box and risk getting hurt. You can just explode and land on a box. You can add a weight vest and land on a box that's a safe height. Also a safe height for you to get off of. Because as an athlete, right, if say you can jump on a 60 inch box, jumping off of a 60 inch box, mostly because they don't make 60 inch boxes, is sketchy as fuck. It's a good way to fall down and break your fucking arm and you're an idiot. Eliminating setbacks and trying to stay focused on the positive route, that's the key. What can you do today that makes you better? We're all gonna have 
life and bullshit get in the way. And back to this, the further you are on this, and the more work it takes to make that next bump up, where you have to have your diet dialed in, you have to have sleep dialed in, your supplementation's gotta be good, and your recovery, everything has to be on point for you to make that next progress, because you're maxing out what your body's potentially capable of. That's when these tiny setbacks start really cutting in, because if you're pushing that hard at that level, you're always riding this really fine line between hurt and healthy. And that perfect line in the middle there between those two is kind of where you want to stay as an athlete. That's where you're going to make the most progress. Sometimes you push a little far and you overtrain and you have a deload, right? And then you're right back in the heart of it. That's where you want to stay. But because we're all competitive and because we're all fucking idiots, we sometimes overstep our bounds and we get hurt. And that sets us back a couple weeks. That's that step that we're missing. That's where you lose a big chunk of progress. That's setbacks. But while you're hurt, don't fuck up the things that you can control. Stick to the diet, stick to your plan, stick to work. Don't let a bunch of other shit get compounded because of one bad mistake, right? You see people do it with diet all the time. Like, oh fuck, I had a really bad lunch and they blew a couple, you know, numbers or what they should have hit and then they lose their fucking mind and go 7,000 calories over on dinner. What the fuck did that accomplish? It's not like, it's not like this clean slate of your body and metabolism kicks over at fucking midnight. That's, it's not how we work. It is calories in versus calories out, period. It doesn't start over every day. It's just a really easy way that we've decided to track it. All right, so speaking of my day's done, workout's done, I need to keep my shit together, and I need to go eat. I gotta put food in here apparently since I gotta Try to be a little bit better with nutrient timing. Maybe that's something I'm kind of fucking up that I could be a little bit better with, but that's just because I've got a wonky schedule, but less excuses, right? Just fucking do the work. Anyway, thank you guys for hanging out and watching another fucking workout in the garage. What's that puppy doing? Piddles. Hey, puppy. All right, get on out of here. All right, so speaking of, I'm gonna go inside and hang out with them, and I'm gonna eat. Have a good night. Spread hate, always party.